Welcome to our presentation, Collaborative Data Processing and Documenting Using OrgBubble. My name is Lukas Bosson and I'm from the EWTH Aachen University in the city of Aachen, Germany. And this my, is... name, my name is Jonathan Hartman. I'm also from the IT Center here at EWTH Aachen. Great. And we will show you today how you can use org mode for data busy. So you see a little workflow, what we are going to do. First, we will give you a slight introduction to org mode. Then we will dive in into the part of data preparing. First, you're going to query the data using the language Sparkle. Then we're going to clean it using a different language. And in the main part of our presentation, we're going to do the data processing. First, aggregating using Python. Later on, counting items using org and even visualizing it using R. At the end, we're going to show you how to preserve the data and the document and its documentation first during in plain exporting, then adding some metadata and showing you two different ways. First, a manual export and also then a batch processed export. All right, let's dive in to that. Jonathan, can you give us an introduction about org mode? Of course. So uh, in case anyone isn't familiar with it, org mode, uh, in the words of Karsten Dominic, uh, is back to the future for plain text. Uh, so this is just a module available for Emacs, uh, plain text base. It's been around since 2003, which makes it about 20 years old, uh, and it's extensible and fully customizable. In especially, it's uh, very convenient, very good for scientific text production and organization. So, for example, you can do project management, agenda, diary, journaling, personal knowledge management, presentation. Even this is written in org mode. It's an org mode presentation. You can do single source publishing, which we will do later on, and also literary programming, which is the core of our talk. Okay, so let's, let me stop this presentation here. So what you see here is the plain text underneath it. So this is uh, org mode. And Jonathan, since we kind of already did the uh, introduction together, should we also do the uh, working part together? Of course. So uh, you see on the screen there on the right, that's my screen in Emacs. And Lucas, uh, why don't you host a session using uh, CRDT and I'll connect to your buffer. Okay, great. I do that. So what I do, I'm using Doom Emacs and I can use the space and then the L for the live share call up part. And I can use the S for share current buffer. So when I do this, I'm getting also for uh, some settings. I'm going with the default settings here. So default port, no password, and my display name. And now uh, Emacs is connecting. And once it's connected, which just takes a couple of seconds, I can get the URL. So I'm going back to this menu and using Y for copying the URL of the current session. And this is the URL I'm going to send over to you, Jonathan, to pick that up. Right. Okay. And now on my screen, I'm going to do a space L C for connect. Uh, and I'm going to paste the URL that Lucas just sent me in here. Uh, default port, no password. And we're connecting now. Uh, so this takes a second just to get us uh, synced up. So we can work on the same document at the same time. Uh, we can follow each other's curses around. We can have multiple buffers open and work on them at the same time. Uh, and so here you see that we are both in the same document. You can see my cursor popping around. And you can see we're both yeah. editing the same item. Great. So we also see who else is currently in our buffer with the user overview. So let me just... Uh, delete that window and let's going to work in our main one. So we said first part is about data retrieval. So we should give it a headline. Um, right. hold on, we said the prepare stage. So what are we going to do first, Jonathan? So uh, what we're going to do with it, this whole document is based upon is we're going to pull data from Wikidata using a Sparkle query. Uh, the data we're going to pull is related to the NFDIs, uh, which here in Germany is the National Forschungsdaten Infrastructure. 
uh, which is a uh, sort of collection of universities that work together on various research projects. Uh, and this is just sort of emblematic of the kind of data that we would be interested in uh, working with here. So I'm going to paste a, forgive uh, the pre-written code, I'm going to paste some text in here. Yeah, while you are talking, I just keep uh, documenting. So what we do, so we can split the work. Right. In here, after a minor technical upset, uh, is the raw data set uh, cell, and it's going to use Sparkle, which is how we have the syntax highlighting in our code here. Uh, it's going to go to the URL endpoint query.wikidata.org slash Sparkle. Uh, and it's going to return the data as a text CSV, and it's going to cache that data. Uh, so that we don't constantly hammer the API every time we uh, we run this notebook. And so I'm going to run that there, and you can see down at the bottom of my screen, we're contacting the host query.wikidata.org. There's a result. Yeah, except uh, I think that for, for our purposes here, uh, we're just going to limit this to 50 results. Oh, yeah. Uh, just... So it's a little easier for us to manage. I'm going to run that again. Okay. There we go. That looks a little better. I think that's fine. 50 items is fine. So what do we see here, Jonathan, now? Right. So the first thing uh, we see when we look at this uh, is a couple of Q codes at the top, which are an artifact of Wikidata. Uh, so these are uh, pages which don't have a label for whichever uh, institution they happen to be. And for our purposes here, we're just going to exclude them. Um, we could just go on Wikidata and edit them ourselves, but for now, uh, it's a little more interesting if we go and uh, remove them. So I'm going to create a new cell, uh, Lucas, if you don't mind starting uh, one for data cleaning. Oh, yeah. Good part. Yeah, data cleaning. Uh, okay. How do you want to do that, Jonathan? Uh, I'm going to use a shell command. Okay. So let's see. There we go. Um, and so you can see here, here's another cell uh, that the cell is now using a uh, shell and that we have this thing var input equals raw data set, which is the name of the cell above where we got our data from Wikidata. Uh, and this is going to run just a simple shell command. It's going to take the input and then run sed on it and exclude any records which have a Q followed by uh, one or more digits afterwards. And so that should remove those from our data set. So I'm going to run that. And that seems to have done the trick. Great. Yeah. That's reason we got rid of all the Q items. Very good. So we just have two column table, institutions, and consortia. Very nice. So let's come to our main part, doing some processing. So let me give you a headline here process the data. Uh, what do you want to do first? So uh, this is not a very complicated data set, but let's just do some simple counts first. So uh, I'm going to start with Python, and we're just going to do some aggregation with Python. So again, I've got some pre-written code here. And so you can see that we've started a cell using Python. Uh, the variable clean df now is equal to clean data set. So we're going to take that data that we retrieve from the Sparkle query, we're going to run it through the cleaning cell, and then we're going to import it into this cell. And this is just going to do some simple Python aggregation. We're going to import pandas, which is the, the Python uh, data science library, create a data frame out of our uh, input, and then aggregate it, grouping on W label and getting a count from that and returning it. So if we execute that cell. Yes, we get uh, institutions and account. But um, what about not uh, ordering by the uh, alphabet, but more like um, ordering by counts? Sure. Uh, so let's do this uh, sort values, I think is the Python. How does that look? Uh, better, but uh, I would like to have to the highest number first and then uh, ascending. Well, not, not ascend, descending. Right. So we can do ascending equals false. This is perfect, I'd say. Great. Very good. Okay. Um, that's nice. We get a good overview here. But can we also do something else? Like you now counting how many institutions uh, are 
uh, involved in one consortium and also using this later on in the text. Sure. So uh, I'm going to put a new, if you give me another heading down here for uh, institutions per mm -hmm. consortium. And here we're going to use awk code uh, just to just to spice things up and add, you know, yet another language in here. So you can see this is awk. Uh, we're using standard in uh, instead of uh, defining a variable. But the really interesting thing about this cell is that we have this var consortium equals NFDI for memory. Uh, and what this code is doing is it's counting anytime it sees that particular consortium name uh, and keeping track of that. So if we execute this, uh, Lucas, why don't you execute this one? Okay, I got it. Um, pressing enter it. And oh, I get a result NFDI for memory because this is our default value for this um, um, variable. And we get the count. So it's five institutions are involved in the NFTI for memory consortium. Great. But the very nice thing, what I think is here that we can use this code snippet within our text. So blend it in seamlessly. Let me give you an example. So I'm writing now the text. So now we know how many institutions are in give you an example. So I would like to know how many institutions are involved in NFDI for objects, which is a consortium. So I'm writing call underscore and using the name of this snippet here of this cell, which is inst count parenthesis and writing my value NFDI objects. So as soon as I evaluate this using control C, control C, I get the result back here. So, and I can do this even for more. Um, or in writing call inst count, um, go with NFDI for Earth, which is another consortium. Control C, Control C. It's three institutions. So, this can be used throughout your text. And as soon as the data set changes from in the beginning, maybe different. Uh, result for querying Wikidata, this also will be updated uh, once it's exported. Very nice, Jonathan. But I think we did a lot of anal uh, analysis on text and counting things. Can we also do something more visual, uh, showing something? Sure. So uh, what we can do with this, because we just have two columns here that are sort of related, uh, we can build a little network plot out of it. Uh, so let's make a network visualization. Uh, we're going to use the iGraph library from R uh, and just plot the edges that we see here. So there we go. There's my little heading and space. And so here is R code again, just just to be fancy and keep keep using different uh, different languages in here. Uh, we set a variable called NFDI edges equal to clean data set. So this again is sort of cascading through the original. Uh, data that we pulled from the uh, Wikidata endpoint, cleaning that data, and now it's being inserted into this cell as well. Uh, but you see the difference here, instead of exporting a table, uh, what we're saying is that there will be a graphics file, and it will be called uh, networkplot.png. All right, and uh, so Lucas, why don't you execute this one? There I go. I can click Control-C, Control-C, and I get a nice plot of the network below our cell. So this is very nice indeed. So I think it's about time to wrap it up and to export and to preserve the data and the documentation that we have in our very last step calling preserve. So I would like to do it in two steps. First, maybe manually exporting it, and but then also doing it in a batch process. Um, give you some insights on how to do that manual export. For example, you can do a later export. Let me write down the key combination to do that here. So you press space and then the letter M, the letter E, letter L, letter O. Okay, let me show you um, how uh, this is done. So I'm pressing space. I'm pressing M, which is my local leader. 
I'm pressing E, which is now the org export dispatch. And now I have different options I can choose from. I'm, I want to do a LaTeX export because I want to get in PDF. So I'm pressing L. Now I've got different options available. So I'm pressing O for as a PDF file and open that. So you see now the, uh, the code. So now this is exporting document. And what we have here is a PDF which contains our workflow in the beginning, our um, bullet points we have here, and also the code snippet that we use for querying the data. And we have the result below that. So this is our table with all the data sets. But as you can see, this is running out of the, the page. Uh, so this is not very nice using the default settings. But everything is in this PDF. And I guess we can now show you a way how to improve this resort. Right. So we have, of course, a, a version of this, which we prepared ahead of time, which is more or less identical to the one we just made, but you know, it has a little more text, a little more explanation, uh, a little more documentation along with the code. Uh, but you can see we have some metadata up at the top, you know, the, the title, the authors, uh, a bibliography and uh, and most importantly the custom export dot setup file, uh, which lists uh, specifically the the sort of LaTeX commands that we're using and the HTML that we're going to uh, styles that we're going to use. Um, and then down at the bottom of this file, we have our uh, automatic batch process. So here is one more language we're including in here. So this is Lisp. And you can see here, we are exporting to HTML, ASCII, and PDF. And so the nice thing about this is that this is a document, is a sort of document that we have a couple of, uh, that we can have uh, running automatically and building, and it will export a HTML, an ASCII file, and a PDF file every time it's run based off of the most recent data available on Wikidata. So it's uh, self-documenting. So we have, of course, our data retrieval steps, our uh, data cleaning steps, our data preparation steps, and our preservation steps all listed at the same time. And then you can see over on the right, there's an example of the HTML file that we get out of this. Uh, we also get a very nicely formatted PDF file, uh, which doesn't have that little issue with the, uh, the overflow of the table. Uh, it's, it's very nicely put together. And we even have uh, an ASCII file. And I should also point out very quickly, uh, while you have this one up, Lucas, at the, uh, after the awk code, uh, you can see the uh, text for uh, the number of consortia or the number of institutions per consortia is actually printed in line. Oh, yeah, we are very right. So this is what we had as code. And now this is kind of nicely integrated into our text. So we got the, NFT, uh, the consortium and the number of institutions. So you can't tell the difference between code and text. And those are automatically updated. So if another institution joins NFT for Earth, uh, then the next time this runs, we update the text right here, and it's nothing uh, we have to worry about. We just pull it directly out of uh, Wikidata. And so for sake of uh, completeness, this is the the ASCII file. That's in the export format. It contains also everything, code and data. Yeah. So this is what we wanted to show you, um, how to do uh, some data processing, some collaborative work documenting using Bubble. Thanks for listening. Thank you all, have a good day.